The Battle of Bai China or Battle of Pichin was the deciding battle of the 1587-1588 War of the Polish Succession, which erupted after two rival candidates were elected to the Polish throne. Both sides had rough parity in forces, with armies about 6,000 strong, divided roughly into half infantry and half cavalry. The battle was an overwhelming victory of the Polish-Swedish faction, led by the Swedish-born king-elect Sigismund III Vasa, over the army of his rival to the throne, Maximilian III, Archduke of Austria, taking place near the Silesian town of Pichin, then just a few kilometers outside the territory of Poland-Lithuania, on 24 January 1588. Sigismund's supporters were commanded by Chancellor and Great Crown Hetman Jan Zamoyski. Besides the commanders, notable participants included Stanislaw Stadnicki on the Maximilian side, and Stanislaw Olkiewski on Sigismund's. The army of the Polish-Austrian faction was largely annihilated, the Archduke was captured and his cause came to an abrupt end. He subsequently renounced his claim to the Polish throne. Background. In 1586, following the death of previous Polish king, Stefan Batory, the Swedish Duke Sigismund III Vasa and Habsburg Maximilian III, Archduke of Austria took part in the election to the joint Polish-Lithuanian throne. Each of the two candidates had supporters in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth with the two opposing sides gathered around pro Sigismund Chancellor, and Great Crown Hetman Jan Zamoyski and the Primate of Poland, Stanislaw Karnkowski on one side and the pro-Maximilian Z. Borowski family on the other. The rivalry between Zamoyski and the Z. Borowski family dated years past and tensions during the elections ran high. Sigismund, supported by Zamoyski and the former king's wife, Anna Jagiellon, was elected king of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth on 19 August 1587 and recognized as such by the Interrex, the primate Karnkowski. The election was disputed, however, by Maximilian and opponents of Sigismund chose not to respect the election outcome, decreeing that Maximilian was the rightful monarch three days later on the 22nd of August. The Z. Borowski family called for the rockers and the election ended in chaos, with several killed and many wounded. For both Zamoyski and the Z. Borowski family, losing was not an option, as they knew the losing side would likely pay a severe price, from confiscations and a loss of prestige to a possible death sentence for treason. Neither Sigismund nor Maximilian were present in the Commonwealth at that time. After receiving news of the election, both Sigismund and Maximilian made haste for Poland. Sigismund arrived at Danzig on 28 September and, after approximately two weeks, he had departed to Krakow, where he arrived on 9 December and was crowned on 27 December. Maximilian attempted to resolve the dispute by bringing a military force to Poland, thereby starting the War of the Polish Succession. After a failed attempt to take Krakow in late 1587, successfully defended by Zamoyski, he retreated to gather more reinforcements but was pursued by the forces loyal to Sigismund. Zamoyski at first wanted to avoid a large battle, as he hoped for more reinforcements and supplies, but, when it became apparent that Maximilian would be reinforced first, he decided to press an attack. He also received the king's and royal permission to cross the borders and attack Maximilian in Silesia. Zamoyski divided his army into several regiments that were able to march quickly, at approximately 24 kilometers a day. He reformed his army after a week near Chesterka. In the meantime, on the 22nd of January 1588, Maximilian crossed the border into his own territory, towards Baichina, opposing forces. Each side had comparable forces. Maximilian had about 6,500 men, about half of which were infantry. His forces consisted primarily of Silesians, Hungarians and Moravians, with artillery consisting of four heavy and a dozen or so lighter pieces. 
Zamoyshi's forces numbered about 6,000, including 3,700 cavalry, 2,300 infantry, and several cannon. Maximilian's Polish supporters included 600 cavalry under the command of the Devil of Lankit, Stanislaw Stadniki. Another of Maximilian's notable Polish supporters at the battle was the poet Adam Zarowski. Overall Maximilian's forces held the advantage in infantry, while Zamoyshi's was in cavalry. The Poles favoured the cavalry, which had supreme mobility and used the effective charging tactics, but also meant that their infantry was geared too much towards cavalry support. The battle. On the night of 24 January the Archduke's army took positions east of the small town of Bychina on the Royal Road leading into Poland. They felt secure in their camp on the Habsburg side of the border, and did not expect the Poles to cross. Zamoyski marshaled his forces into three lines and was able to position them at an angle to the opponent's line. The exact position of the Polish army is unknown, but part of the Polish right flank, moving quietly in the dense mist, encircled Maximilian's left flank. After the mist began to clear the Archduke realized his force was being flanked and his retreat to Bychina was threatened. He ordered an attack but a miscommunication of his orders confused part of his army and the Hungarian regiment began to retreat. The Polish left wing, under command of future hetman Stanislaw Olkievsky, dispersed the opposing units. The battle saw more infantry action than many others of the Commonwealth but, even so, the Polish cavalry played a major part. The battle began with some duels between Elias, soon followed by Polish cavalry charges, on the left flank and in the center, which did not result in any significant breakthroughs for either side. Zamoyski is said to have commanded the battle very well, turning it at several points. Eventually a Polish hussar counter-attack on the left flank mulled Maximilian's Hungarian cavalry and forced his army to start giving ground. The bloody retreat quickly turned into a general rout during which the Archduke's army suffered heavy casualties. The entire battle lasted approximately one to two hours. Maximilian took refuge in Bychina, but the Poles took control of his artillery and turned the guns on the town. Before the Polish forces began their assault, Maximilian surrendered and was taken prisoner. The battle, therefore, ended up being the decisive victory for the Polish-Swedish faction. Aftermath Exact casualties are unknown, but the Archduke's army suffered heavier losses, estimated at about 2,000, whereas the Poles lost about 1,000 men. Olkievsky captured an enemy standard but received a knee wound which lamed him for life. After the intervention of a papal envoy Maximilian was released, but only after spending 13 months as a guest of Zamoyski. In the Treaty of Vitamin Bezin Maximilian was to renounce the Polish crown and Rudolf II, Holy Roman Emperor had to pledge not to make any alliances against Poland with the Muscovy or Sweden. The town of Lubola, taken early in the conflict by Maximilian, was returned to Poland. Upon his return to Vienna he failed to honor his pledge and renounce his claim to the Polish crown and would not do so until 1598.